Can Cardano scale to a million transactions per second? And I know that sounds like a lot, but those are the numbers people are tossing around these days. A lot of blockchains are pumping a lot of TPS and can Cardano outpace them with a million transactions per second? That is the question we're gonna answer in this video. In order to answer that question, there's three big pieces of new technology Cardano has been rolling out that you're going to need to understand. The first one's Leos, then we have Paris, and then we have Hydra. You might be familiar with Hydra, but let's break down the other two and show how they integrate with Hydra to make Cardano scale 20 times, 30 times faster than it already is today. In order to accurately answer the question, we also need to understand what Cardano does currently. And what Cardano does currently is very in line with what Bitcoin does as a blockchain. It's called the Nakamoto chain. And basically all of Cardano's block work synchronously, right? The longest chain effect. And it's one block, one block, one block, one block, okay? And the line just goes on forever. That's what Cardano does currently. It's called the Nakamoto block structure. Bitcoin uses the same structure. Bitcoin runs on a 10 minute block time per second. So every 10 minutes you get a Bitcoin block. Cardano does this a little bit differently and it's reduced the amount of time between blocks, but it's currently sitting at a 20 second block time window. Why 20 seconds? Why do we get a block on Cardano every 20 seconds? Because going much lower than that, down to five seconds or less, really reduces security of the chain. So Cardano wants to increase block time, which increases finality speeds, which increases transaction speeds, which increases, you know, um, the speed with which people can do money exchanges on the blockchain and lowers lag. So we have lower block times than Bitcoin, but we're still utilizing these Nakamoto chains, these longest chains, and we're using 20 second block times to maintain security and to use the things that Bitcoin has proven robustly. Bitcoin has proven a lot of things in the Bitcoin industry. It's proven that they work. It's proven that they work for a long time and work really well. That's why Cardano uses the Nakamoto longest chain effect. That Nakamoto effect is good. It's great. Cardano runs super well, but it's not going to scale Cardano very fast. We see what Bitcoin's block times are and they're not super fast. So how, and we know transactions per second on Bitcoin are not fast either. So how does Cardano take this idea take Bitcoin's ideas of the Nakamoto longest chain of these block times of the UTXO model of all this and scale it to the next generation. How does Cardano compete with Solana? Solana currently does four to 800 transactions per second and has a touted maximum TPS of 65,000 transactions per second. How does Cardano compete with that and what does it do to upgrade the L1 to make it more efficient, scalable, speedy, all these things? The first thing Cardano is doing and it's actively being worked on right now it will be worked on in 2025 and we're hoping for a late, uh, what I've heard is maybe a late 2025 rollout or a 2026 rollout, maybe at the latest, you know, a 2027 rollout. But next year and the year after that, these are the things being worked on. The first thing is Ouroboros Laos. Laos is Cardano's parallel chain processing solution. And what this means is that instead of having one block type that runs every 20 seconds on the Cardano blockchain, Cardano will now have three block types that work all the time. So in the current system, in the Nakamoto longest chain system that Cardano runs on, every 20 seconds we get a block, all the nodes or all the computers or all the stake pools, however you wanna say it, running the network do work. They do work and they try to be the lucky one to validate the block and validate the transaction, right? This happens every 20 seconds. Right now on Cardano, every time between these 20 seconds, all the other 19 seconds, the nodes do nothing right? They don't do anything. So what Cardano is doing with Laos is saying during these 20 seconds, we want the nodes to do work, not just on the last second, but all the other 19 seconds, we want the nodes to do work to bundle and verify transactions so that every 20 seconds on the last second where we push a block to the chain, we can push 10 or 20 times the amount of blocks with the same amount of effort. We already have these computers. We already have nodes set up. Let's put them to work all of the time while still being secure, while still being decentralized. This is what Laos is doing. This solution is called Input Endorser. Some people will call it Parallel Processing, but basically three new block types are being created on Cardano. We don't just have the one block type that we have now, but now Laos is creating input blocks, it's creating endorsement blocks, and it's creating ranking blocks. How do these three work together? How do they make the chain faster? So every transaction on Cardano all the little transactions you do to buy an NFT or make a trade or do a DeFi position, these are input blocks. Think of hundreds of input blocks at the very top of this funnel. You have all of your input blocks every you know, 20 seconds, every, all the transactions that have been done are up here as input blocks. Each one's an input block. What those input blocks do 
is there's a second type of block called an endorsement block that is certifying and validating these input blocks and these transactions. And once it certifies a input block, it brings it into the endorsement block and has this package of verified certified input blocks called an endorsement block. So we have input blocks, which are all the transactions, and then we have endorsement blocks, which are a bundled group of input blocks that have been certified by the nodes, by the stake pool operators, while they're waiting for the next, you know, last second of the 20 seconds to push a ranking block through. These endorsement blocks that are bundles of certified input blocks are then pushed to ranking blocks. Ranking blocks are packages, bundles of endorsement blocks that have been certified and verified and are ready to be pushed to the, the, the main L1. When these things are pushed to the main L1, we convert it to a ranking block, which is then the final block that gets pushed to the actual L1, pushed to the actual chain, and is the next block in the chain. So we have input blocks, which a ton of input blocks get converted into a certified endorsement block. And then we have a couple endorsement blocks getting pushed into a certified ranking block. And then every 20 seconds, one ranking block gets pushed down to the Cardano base layer and gets added to the next longest line in the Nakamoto chain of the Cardano blockchain that we know and love. This system allows for all of the nodes to be doing some type of work every second of the day. Instead of doing work on the 20th second, every 20 seconds, right? Instead of pushing one block to the chain and voting on it and verifying it and you know pushing it as the next longest chain, now with input endorsers, every 20 seconds, blocks are gonna be doing, or, or nodes are going to be doing something every 20 seconds. Whether they're building input blocks, whether they're building endorsement blocks and certifying them, or whether they're the lucky one to push the ranking block to the main chain, Nodes are gonna be doing something all the time. This allows the Cardano blockchain to effectively scale to around 1500 estimated transactions per second because of how many transactions can fit into endorsement blocks and then ranking blocks. The UTXO model lets us bundle this all up. This is what's happening with info blocks. This is the power of Ouroboros Laos and what it's trying to do for Cardano to effectively allow it to bundle 10 times more, 20 times more transactions than it does currently in every ranking block. So instead of pushing 100 transactions to the main chain at once to be verified in the next longest block, we can push 1,000, right? we can effectively 10X or 20X the amount of things going on on Cardano at any point in time. If that gets you excited, if Laos gets you excited, scaling Cardano up to 1500 transactions per second, please sit back down in your chair because what's coming next is even better or it's just as good. So Laos is gonna allow Cardano to effectively build 10, 20 times more blocks than it currently does every 20 seconds. So we're, we're scaling the chain by doing more work. Well. Right now, a current problem on Cardano is that we still, when we do a transaction, it takes time, time to settle. If we were to go buy a coffee with ADA, we would have to sit around for the coffee to kind of, you know, the transaction to go through for a couple of minutes. And if, if blocks are full, if, if the chain is full, we might have to sit around for like five minutes waiting for this transaction to go through so we can get our coffee. This is obviously not ideal in a real world scenario where Cardano is, is digital money. So the next thing Cardano needs after packaging more transactions onto the chain at one time is it needs those transactions to be finalized much quicker. This is where Paris, Ouroboros Paris, comes into play, and its goal is to get Cardano finality to two minutes, reliably at two minutes. So every time you do a transaction, within two minutes, your transaction will be verified or proven to be true on the Cardano blockchain. It does this by turning the Cardano blockchain from a longest Nakamoto chain to a heaviest Nakamoto chain. You can imagine this kind of really it's not a DAG structure, but it's kind of similar in the fact that we have our longest chain, but as blocks are being built and transactions are being processed, we kind of have a couple forks of the chain at any point in time. Now these forks get resolved and these blocks get ordered because of the way that um, the nodes interact with each other, the stake pools interact with each other. And Paris is actually turning Cardano into a heaviest voting based chain. So every time a ranking block is gonna be pushed down to the Cardano blockchain, you know, it's gonna be the next one in the longest chain. What happens is all the stake pool operators or all the nodes are going to then 
use the stake that they hold power of, right? Like you and I delegate to a stake pool. They have control of our staking power and our voting power. They're going to be able to vote on new ranking blocks that have been pushed to the chain and say, oh, that ranking block's good. All the transactions in there are good. My stake of 10 million ADA votes that that's good. And if you have a bunch of nodes doing this with a bunch of ADA within the first second that that block has been pushed there, the finality of that block is almost guaranteed to be much faster than it is today. If you have 100 million ADA voting that that you know, block is good, or a better example would be if you have 20 billion ADA, so half the ADA out there today voting within the first second that that block is a certified, verifiable, verifiable good block, there's no way an attacker is going to be able to move that block or turn back the chain or change the longest block in the chain. So this is where 50% or 51% of 51% uh, attacks become so important because as these stake pools are voting on these blocks and certifying them saying, that's a good block, that deserves to be the next one in the chain, I verify everything in there is correct and good and honest, Paris makes this much more ideal and much more important, and it has these ideas to fight the 51% attack. But effectively, when we turn Cardano, when, when, when the devs turn Cardano from a longest chain to a heaviest chain, stake weighted vote on ranking blocks is going to become so much more important, and it will be very effective in having your block and your transactions done quicker than you could imagine, quicker than they're done today. So if your transaction takes three, four, or five minutes to settle, yeah, technically on Cardano, every transaction needs 12 hours right now to perfectly settle so that we can guarantee the chain won't have a rollback, okay? This usually happens within a few minutes, but in the worst case scenario, it's 12 hours. With a voting-based heaviest chain idea that Paris is bringing into fruition, stake pool operators will be able to vote on ranking blocks, vote on transactions and certify them, say that they know that they're good, they vote that they're good, this is an honest block, we're an honest party, all that good stuff, this will allow finality or the speed that your transaction goes through and that like you get your tokens in your wallet or your NFT shows up in your wallet to happen within two minutes, three minutes. This is a very big step for Cardano in increasing the usability and the speed of transactions on chain. So not only do we have input endorsers increasing the amount of transactions going into every single block on Cardano, increasing its scalability, but then we have Paris, Ouroboros Paris, increasing the finality to make those transactions hit your wallet much quicker. What's the point of having a 20 second block time if your transaction takes five or 10 minutes to settle? With Paris, we can look at a much faster two minute settling time, which I think we can all wait two minutes, right? Two minutes for the transaction to settle. And so we're scaling, we're speeding up finality, and then we have this great, amazing thing called Hydra coming in to really be the L2 of the Cardano ecosystem. Now, Hydra in itself you know, has niche use cases. It's not like an open L2, like Ethereum-based stuff that we've seen with ZK rollup technology, but it has the potential to scale dApps, scale casinos, scale NFT minting, scale games, scale all these things to much higher transactions per second because of the controlled off-chain environment that it allows us to do transactions in. We know a little bit about Hydra. The cool thing about Hydra is that you can always open another Hydra head or you can have multiple Hydra heads running which will increase the amount of transactions you're doing. And when you close that out, thousands of transactions can be bundled from the head back to the Cardano mainnet to get validated and verified and pushed to the L1. With Leos, with Paris, with Hydra, now Cardano is looking at a much more capable scaling ecosystem where dApps can op open a Hydra head and do something cool. Casinos can open a Hydra head and scale scale the transactions. Or you and I can play a game, we can open a Hydra head, we can do near instant transactions with each other because the only thing that matters is whatever goes on in there is perfectly fine. The only thing that matters is when we close it, we just settle to the main layer. So we have Leos, we have Paris, we have Hydra, and then the last thing that we have also coming is side chains. When side chains happen, you can imagine all this stuff happening, but in multiple ecosystems, in a Bitcoin ecosystem, in a Solana ecosystem, in an Algorand ecosystem, in all these different types of ecosystem, and then also happening on the Cardano main L1. So to answer this question of can Cardano hit a million transactions per second, or can Cardano get faster than Solana, I think one, Cardano can become as fast or faster than Solana is currently under certain circumstances. 
if Cardano's having a great day and Solana's having a, a low TPS day, Cardano could definitely outperform when Laos and Paris and Hydra and all these things are fully implemented, especially when Laos and Paris are, are implemented. Cardano could have a 1,500 transaction per day plus and Solana is sitting at four to 800 on a normal day. And so we could see Cardano actually become faster than Solana on certain days as it's improving this Paris Laos ecosystem. Can Cardano hit a million transactions per second? That is going to take a lot of years in development. And I don't wanna be the one to spoil that for you, but it's not just gonna happen randomly this year in 2025 or next year in 2026 or anything like that. Cardano doesn't have the demand of a million transactions per second right now. It just doesn't. No blockchain really has the demand of a million transactions per second unless you're botting the blockchain like crazy. Now in 2030, could we see a million transactions per second or 2034 or 2040? I think we really could see higher levels of scaling in these future decades because we'll have Laos, we'll have Paris, and essentially what Laos and Paris are doing is they're maxing out the base layer of Cardano, the base L1. After Paris and after Laos, Cardano's L1 will not be scalable further, really. The next step is L2s or ZK Tech or Hydra Heads or side chains. And so when we have Cardano with Laos and Paris implemented, then we have dApps on Cardano running with Hydra Heads, and then we have side chains for further scaling the ecosystem, pushing back to the L1, we might be able to see that million transactions per second. A million transactions per second, though, does not happen without Laos, does not happen without Paris, does not happen without Hydra or side chains. And so these are necessary steps, necessary academic rigorous steps that need to be taken in order to effectively understand how Cardano is going to handle scaling and how we can do scaling on Cardano while not sacrificing security or decentralization. Because those are the two biggest selling points Cardano has going for it. And if it gives those up, then it becomes ununique. It becomes just like every other blockchain and it loses its edge. So to wrap this video up, Laos and Paris are some of the biggest things that have ever happened in Cardano. We have had governance this year in 2024, which is absolutely amazing. And governance is going to be very important for Cardano to implement Laos and, and uh, Paris. Laos and Paris are going to be the scaling solutions that everyone's begging for and dying for, right? Cardano scaling to 1500 transactions per second, right? First, they said we didn't have, you know, smart contracts and we got smart contracts. First, they said we were not decentralized because we had the Genesis keys. Cardano and the devs got rid of the Genesis keys. And now we have governance. Now they're going to say Cardano is slow. It's not scalable. So what is Cardano doing? It is becoming scalable. It's becoming adaptable. It is trying its best to solve the blockchain trilemma. This is the path forward. This is how Cardano reaches, you know, 1500 transactions per second. It's a shocking number and it is just... 20 times larger than what it does today. It's massive, massive, massive amounts of numbers. And when Cardano hits that in late 2025 or in 2026, the crypto blockchain world will not be able to say Cardano is slow anymore, all right? If you're excited for the future like I am in Cardano, drop a comment down below. Let us know, like, and subscribe. We hope you enjoyed the video. Other than that, we will see you in the next one.